So the next film that we're going to review premiered, I believe, at Venice and is now on Netflix, but it's uh, El Conde uh, by Pablo Lorraine. Uh, we've reviewed a few of his films over the years, and uh, Simon's going to tell us about this film. Yeah, so uh, General Augusto Pinochet uh, led a military coup d'etat against a democratically elected socialist president, Salvador Allende, in Chile in the 1970s. He instituted a school of economics, the kind of Chicago school of economics that led down the road to kind of neoliberal Thatcherite and Reaganite economics that the US and the UK still suffer under. This film reimagines uh, General Pinochet as a vampire and being born in the during the French Revolution, he has dedicated his immortal life to crushing popular revolutions and workers' <laughs> revolutions around the globe. So in this film, he is he has faked his death, uh, you know, the, the death of General Pinochet. He has faked his death, and he is struggling with the idea of living forever and wanting to die, and also with his family dividing up his, his estate and his inheritance. I wanted to like this a lot more than I did. Uh, I really liked, I, I was on the show, I think, for Spencer, Pablo Lorraine's last film, and I really loved that film. I wanted to like this a lot more. I think the premise is fun and has a lot of promise. I just don't think the film really came together uh, for me. But I'm interested Gee, that to is so interesting. Thoughts. It's, it's, isn't it funny? Isn't it just so wonderful <laughs> how we can have completely inverse opinions? Because I was, I, yeah. I was, <laughs> uh, because I, I uh, as if you've listened, if you listen to the show where we talked about Spencer, I oh, yeah, don't know what to like say Spencer, about Spencer. I, yeah. Yeah. I did not. I had. I, I had criticism we about Spencer for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. This was our team for Spencer, huh? It was. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. yeah. it was actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I inversely went in being quite skeptical, but actually came out having really enjoyed myself and on reflection, <laughs> having having thought it was actually a really good film and it handled it handled it correctly. So, um, it coincides with the fiftieth anniversary of the Trillion coup. Uh, U.S. backed. Let's mention that every opportunity. Oh yeah, CIA backed. Yes, precisely. Um, and I, I just, I think I'll just go straight in with talking about um, Lorraine himself as a filmmaker. So, um, Pablo Lorraine has been criticised by other Chileans for making this film um, because, well, less specifically left-leaning uh, Chileans, because his family um, background, because of his family background, so his family are involved in sort of in right-wing uh, politics and. Um, or part of the Conservative Party and supported the dictatorship, uh, helped to displace a lot of um, native people uh, in Chile. So there's a lot of questioning about whether he is the correct person to be, quote, telling this story, which I find a really interesting point because arguably he doesn't have any business making Jackie or Spencer either, if you're going to go by really stringent mm. kind of yeah. critical guidelines. I mean, um, also, unless I've missed something, Pinochet isn't a vampire who's lived for precisely. It's, years. So, that's exactly know, so. Yeah. It, exactly. So it's not like he portrayed him in a serious biopic depicting Pinochet as like a strong statesman, if a maniacal psychopath. He's a vampire. Like it's pretty categorical where he, and also considering the fact that his um, Lorraine's 2012 film No, which deals with the 1998 mm -hmm. national plebiscite to determine challenging Pinochet's rule. Um, was was a really brilliant film and leaves no kind of <laughs> illusions about uh, about where he stands on the political spectrum. I think that's a a bit of an unfair criticism. Um, it's 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 not a super serious film, and it sends it, it sends up Pinochet in a serious way in a sense without being without taking the piss out of the seriousness of the situation. I feel you may disagree with me, Simon. <laughs> I, I don't disagree. I think that that that's that's entirely valid. I just thought the satire was way too heavy-handed for me. Mm, um, like the, this this image of uh, Pinochet, you know, continuing to suck the life out of the people of Chile and flying over Santiago to find victims. It, it just it all became a bit heavy-handed, especially in the third act. I don't want to give too much away, but especially in the third act, it just became very. Uh, silly for me yeah i think um i think i i i can't i honestly can't just and this is why i'm an absolutely horrendous person to d discuss films with sometimes <laughs> he says he says on a film podcast where he's discussing <laughs> films with people but i i honestly can't really decide whether i like this film or not right i think i got i got some enjoyment out of it right, right. in the sense that 
basically the, the entire concept right that this entire one hour 50 odd minute film runs on is an entire giant metaphor right and it basically comes down to whether you find it that particular central metaphor that simon just described engaging and amusing mm. or if you don't think it really delivers much now to me i had fun with it i don't think it had enough uh you know i'm not going to use a vampire pun because it's probably be done to death now but it didn't it didn't have enough meat <laughs> for me right? oh my god <laughs> um, oh my god <laughs> no, 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 well, that's not vampire. I'm saying I'm not doing one. That's not one, right? Actually, that's zombies. Like, oh, it's not enough. You, you know, just, anyway, it did get the blood pumping up. You, you know, anyway, right? The, but the point I'm making is, it for me, it didn't really, it didn't really deliver much beyond the premise, right? And it's a premise yeah. I had fun with, exactly. but I think to really like it more, I wanted to see. I want to see more from it, right? Now, I agree. I, before I before I go any further with this, right? Something that's going to inform how I talk about this film. One, as the film opens, right? There is a narrator, right? Are we as a group considering the identity of the narrator <laughs> to be obscured and something so, to be revealed? Yeah. So I, I oh, saw I saw because I want to talk about it. That were like you'll never guess who the narrator is. It's a real twist. I like, guessed it within, within two the sentences. First five seconds. I'm like, yeah. wait, well, it's obvious who that narrator is. There's a discussion Spoiler about it. Alert. So if you don't want to know this about the film, then perhaps you maybe skip the next four or five minutes, right? But I, to me, I think for what the film's trying to do, I think to discuss it, we probably need to make it clear. Now, I, mm -hmm. I also want to make it clear that I think to anybody who knows the slightest thing about Pinochet, mm. right? I think it's going to be incredibly obvious who the narrator is within about two seconds of her opening her gob, frankly. Um, so just to, to kind of like to, you know, stop beating around the bush here, right? But it seems pretty obvious to me from the off. The narrator is Margaret Thatcher, right? <laughs> very and, obviously. And you know, to me, to me it's, not a, it's not a twist. It's not a no. reveal, right? Because it like famously... They drop her famous she lines defend, in the first five yeah, minutes. Yeah, she, she was about... the one who said he should go back and be tried in Chile when he was arrested in London and all the rest of it. And like after he was arrested, she sent him a bottle of goddamn whiskey. Scotch, you know, Scotch. like you know, um, and Beep. to me that that's it is kind of central that idea to what the film is trying to get across with its central metaphor, right? Because of course the you know, like how is Thatcher narrating this if she's dead? Oh ho, ho well, you know. <laughs> um you know, so it it's this this idea that these absolute ghouls of politicians continue to cast a shadow not oh. only on the people that they ruled, but kind of the people in other countries that they affected with their rule, right? And Obviously, Lorraine being Chilean and much of his career being like looking at you know Chile as a society, it focuses on on um, Pinochet, right? And obviously, it's trying to draw um, connection between the stuff that Simon mentioned in the intro by introducing Thatcher as a narrator, and it's a concept like that concept. I liked it. I thought mm. it was funny, right? <laughs> I, I it's it, I I enjoyed it, right? And I I love the fact that it gets across. What an absolute ghoul of a person that <laughs> was, right? In this kind of like completely ridiculous way that I enjoyed in a lot of in you know in a lot of ways. <laughs> to me, though, it just didn't have enough behind it. Like, what are you saying beyond this? It yeah. felt to me like the idea for a really funny horror short right. that was then stretched out to an hour and fifty minutes, right? Because because there is a lot of stuff that I think it's trying to say about kind of. The legacy of Pinochet. So a lot of the this a lot of the kind of like what it centers on is uh, Pinochet's children fighting over their inheritance, right? Mm. And you know, and it becomes a bit scattershot in the sense that you know, a, like a nun, a nun character is brought in to do the accounts and also an exorcism. So like, there's maybe some comment on like the church there or the, the Catholic church there as well. And you know, in terms of the way that the kids are fighting, there's a little bit of a comment about kind of, you know, like there's, mm. a, there's a few different targets, but I don't think it really delivers much on any of them beyond kind mm. of the legacy of Pinochet and Thatcher, frankly, right, yeah. it, itself, but it, it doesn't really do much with the concept beyond that, and it's a funny concept. I liked it. I had fun with it. 
I can't honestly say that it's left me thinking about it that much after. That's really yeah. I, I mean, it, it got me it got me reading about him again. I guess <laughs> so. If you're you know if it, it's it might kickstart a uh, sort of reevaluation of neoliberalism and dictatorships and the connections that we have to the current governments, mm-hmm. I suppose. Um, but yeah, I'd like no, to hope no, it reminds everybody of Thatcher's role with right. Pinochet. Precisely, because like, there know, are people like... that won't under that won't know that. Just to just to make that clear while we're here. Um, in 1999, when Pinochet was under house arrest in Britain, he'd been arrested in London. Uh, Thatcher decided it would be completely appropriate and not uh, not messed up at all to uh, to send him some scotch with a, a letter that read, "Scotch is one British institution which will never let you down." So there, there's more to that as well. There's a whole, you know, we supplied arms to the Chilean government. Also, a uh, fun fact: uh, Scottish arms workers in a factory uh, went on strike in the in that period uh, because they, in solidarity right. for Chilean. Uh, for Chilean people, that's something to look into if you're interested. I'll, in also, a, a no, good no, film no. around it. A lot of my know, a lot of my knowledge around this period actually comes from the documentary film *Ne Passeran*. Yeah, which exactly. Has that right, so that's that's definitely a film mm. that's also worth worth checking out in that regard. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just a, it's a very sort of a, the, the film is yeah, it's it's fun but not very deep. But I I enjoyed it. I think it was very well done. It was it was a sort of a, a Brothers Grimm kind of story with a lot of allegory yeah uh, a lot of, about infighting and about yeah the church uh very grisly I, I liked it it was it was it had it had touches of sort of the bloody the bloody chamber a bit of tim burton thrown in there for good measure but grisly absurd satirical dark funny there is there was at moments there was uh there was some actually very beautiful and stark uh cinematography and some imagery and very yeah much, totally like nightmarish uh shots in it. I think Which I, I, I think I, I've you know we've discussed what I don't think works in the film, but on your point, Clara, there's some incredible and striking images mm. in isolation, like some very gothic yeah. uh, images. I'm thinking of a young Pinochet licking blood off a guillotine blade. Fun. Great image. Pinochet gliding above the streets of Santiago, his cape <laughs> flapping in the breeze. I giggled so hard. I Looked loved great. it. Great. Yeah. It. I I I loved you know that that look of the film just don't think it came together yeah i mean they're actually really art, beautiful artful sequences you mm. know uh, we're in the nun who uh oh yeah takes, that's great. Who, who is taking on the satanic vampire pinochet flies and dances across mm. a bleak landscape uh, and it's, it's it's really heavy with this sort of brittle poetry which i think mm. ensures that the film is as a whole doesn't totally make light of the horror and brutality enacted by pinochet's regime but by and large i do agree with both of you but yeah so I'm gonna disagree. I'm gonna disagree with Clara on that last point and go back to what uh, Simon was saying. Technically, what I did like about it is technically, I thought it was a very interesting film. I think it's important to note that Pablo Lorraine was the camera operator, or as he's listed as a camera operator as part of it, and if they were using technology in this in this film in a way of using old lenses that um, uh, certain directors that you know back in the 40s or 50s were using they 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 filmed this entirely with the idea to build like a black and white image instead Mm. of like reshifting Mm. it into black and white a film ship was created in order to build this film so ed lackman the cinematographer who came up with this concept but the idea was about this like kind of 360 thing which you saw with less of the sort of like Mm. shots and lighting and stuff so I feel like the film was beautiful so it stopped I was captivated by a lot of these kinds of images the images of of Patagonia and the like the the land and the scape and stuff like that mm. I didn't think and I think this goes back to my I have a I like certain films and certain aspects for their story and structure and stuff that I don't like the tone and I don't I don't necessarily feel comfortable with films like Jojo Rabbit, which I think is mm. like a twee version of something that's a terrible mm. subject. And I think that's a problem that I it started out with me. And I, you know, Jim, you were talking, it, I'm, if we focused on the hungry, greedy kids and not as much of Pinochet as a vampire, that makes it funny. And I just uh, like that I'm uncomfortable with. And and at the same time, I've not seen Lorraine's original stuff, which you mentioned, Clara, specifically, that I think that's kind of part of what Pablo Lorraine is known for, where I know him from Jackie and Spencer and Ima, which we've I really loved. I loved like the color and the like I, the way that film was fed. I just I I think I was grappling between tone and technical 
interest in the film that there were yeah I understand yeah it's it's tough I mean so I watched it last night like late last night so I guess my thoughts are still forming about it but I do th I feel like the nun character did save it because through her the hatred of this man is voiced very succinctly and I mean uh, yeah she has a lot of a very scathing to the point and quite uh, and quite astute um observations about about how Pinochet functioned and how he operated and how he came to power which for you know if people don't have a lot of background that is it's a good it's a good in for people I mean if you're if you're on Netflix just stumbling around then that you they may be interested in it um and I think they imagine conversations between Pinochet and his butler uh discussing their odious history who is by the way butler being the second in command when he was in power um discussing their odious history and their gory foibles as if they were discussing each other's partiality for well, scotch or for pastries did toe the line where it was sort of it did feel like it was taking the piss out of something that was very that's very serious and it, I, I kept thinking of Han of, of, that, of the banality of evil and the, all the writing on the banality of evil and where yeah about how when you try and scrape the surface of evil and evil acts and people like what do you find where, where, where and it, i think i think almost the absurdity of this film is an interest is interesting in and of itself because it reveals what there is kind of going on in that vacuum it's just like this sort of warped nightmarish set of conversations because this, this film does feel like it was something that uh that Lorraine had a dream about and then decided to run with it <laughs> pretty much I did not get the impression that Pablo Lorraine is making a comment about about all of these like it was very clear it was an hour and 50 minutes long you you knew what side he was on it's just that it seems the the commentary of something mm. being slightly silly but for example, with Hitler, like you know, you know, when um, like when you're watching um, the send up of Hitler dancing across a room with the globe in a musical number, like you're not like you're, you're laughing at the dictator himself, yeah. I suppose. Like I mean, that that's how I'm trying to read it, I suppose. But I, I I did in the back of my mind, I keep thinking, well, it's easy for me to think this and to make justifications. But how would you feel if you still are living directly with the I, implications? I, I, I think the, the com I think regime. the conversation that the the pair of you are having kind of speaks to the. The thing that the film maybe doesn't, in my view anyway, do, do great in that it, it it does struggle with tone a little bit, yeah. right? And I think that I I think that's why it doesn't necessarily deliver as sharp a satire as I think right. it needs to. Now I'm not yes. gonna, I'm not going to relitigate um Spencer and and Jojo Rabbit right? because Jojo Rabbit I actually got quite a lot out of Jojo Rabbit apart from the final scene. The final scene right. is ridiculous, yeah. right? I think it'd be it'd be a much better film if we got rid of that final scene. Yeah. I think that's absolutely horrendous. Yeah. Beyond that, I did I did you know prior to that point get quite a bit out of that film and the way that it was actually depicting um Nazism, right? And Spencer, right, just to, to go back to, to Lorraine's filmography, I think what I would say is despite the fact that film is a is a portrait of a time in Princess Diana's life and it kind of obliquely deals with the royal family, I actually think that does a lot better a job of criticising totally. Britain and British society in the 80s than Thatcher's role in this film does, right? right? Uh, you know, yeah. just to even stay within his filmography yeah. and his recent one, I think it actually does that in a much... A uh, smarter way with oblique references than than this film does with quite um you know very on the nose ones um and I think that to me kind of sums up the fact that it struggles a little bit with the tone in what it in how it wants to say things and then it doesn't necessarily deliver fully on it for kind of the the amount of time that we spend with these kind of like very exaggerated characters and to go back to Clara's mm -hmm. point about kind of like it feels a little bit like something that Pavel Lorraine had a dream about and then woke up and decided to make a film about it that, that's kind of how it feels to mm -hmm. me when I made that mm -hmm. reference to it. it feels like the concept of a kind of like funny horror short then spun out totally. into something that's kind of what I feel it, it feels like to me but it's like it doesn't quite have the satirical um you know substance to then sustain that over the runtime of the film and i think that then makes it a bit easier to um take issue with some of these maybe elements that maybe it does feel a bit trivializing because if it doesn't mm. have the substance to back it up then it will you know um and i think so i think i kind of agree with everyone to, to an extent yeah. i wanted to like this more i got some stuff out of it um it, but it does struggle with certain aspects isn't it I think. kind of disappointing that someone who made such a good horror film out of spencer and we've talked about that in terms of with like how tar feels like a horror film and spencer mm -hmm. feels like a horror film and yet he made a horror film and it's <laughs> that's, that's, not and it's a it doesn't a have point. the same nuance yeah. and 
uh, intense horrorness to it as it as it's his previous film is. So I yeah, I, I, I'd yeah. go so far as to say it doesn't have the same bite. <laughs> of course you do. I love it. Guys. I, you know, you know. So I worked so hard to not say satirical <laughs> bite a few seconds ago, and he's just what straight. The irony of us taking the piss there. out of it with. with I, I do have a theory. I do have a theory actually about why um it's maybe it doesn't feel like such a good horror film as that, and I'm actually going to put it down to, in my view, the music, right? Because mm-hmm. the, I something that's probably worth noting is Spencer had a score done by Johnny Greenwood, right? right yeah. And I think it's some of his score. work, right? If you think about kind of like you know, there will be blood, like all all these mm-hmm. things that he's done, right? It, it some of them, in particular for Spencer, they just sound so nightmarish at points, right? So I think a lot of Spencer's strength you know and that's not to play down Lorraine's contribution because obviously he's a fantastic filmmaker and that that in my view is an excellent film but I think in terms of kind of like that particular aspect of it a lot of it came from that and I do, you, you know you don't you don't have that um you know to the same extent here so I think that that's maybe part of it for me while we're comparing Spencer and and El Conde I, I think this film needs an emotional anchor as well, yeah. which we have in Spencer in the in the place of Diana Spencer, uh, Kristen Stewart's terrific performance. And here we don't have that kind of emotional anchor. Yeah, we we just spend a lot of time with General Pinochet and his. Oh, I like Carmen the Nun. I was into Carmen the, the Nun. nun. I was, yeah, the I was nun into. Does kind of but, play I, that but, role. but that's the thing. It didn't really work yeah. for me. I think. But, I think like to speak to Clara's point earlier, yeah. right? That's that's kind of the role. The, the the role that Simon's talking about, I think she's meant to fulfil that to mm. a certain extent, but she's but... not in it enough, and she yeah. doesn't well, get exactly, developed enough as a my, character. Yeah. There is, but real... that's, I, I like that though because the, the way that she's so dispensable and is so just like you know, and then um, so immediately her so so as as a nun, her belief in God is what she's got going for her, and that's her like strength against against Pinochet, and then the, the narrator immediately is saying like, and her love of God, if that means anything, and it's just immediately, I think I think the hopelessness and the flimsiness of that character and her arc is is in and of itself meant to be like telling that you can't really come up against the dictatorship and mm. and win or you can't exist in a dictatorship, but um. But yeah, I know I I I I do understand what you mean though. I think it it did need a little bit more there, among its many flaws. <laughs> it felt like the film's moments of genuine anger, and I'm, I'm interpreting this as Lorraine's moments of genuine anger, mm. came through the voice of the nun when she's talking right. to the many members of the Pinochet family and outlining what I'm sure are actual crimes of of the Pinochet family. But yeah, as a character, it didn't really wasn't developed enough for me to 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 glom on to well do you and his next film by the way is going to be more along the lines of jackie and spencer i believe uh uh pablo lorraine's planning a film about maria callas uh Ooh. with uh, angelina jolie as which is interesting but yeah. um or but but anyway so that will be with the same cinematographer Cool. El Conde is on Netflix at the moment. It had a really short uh, cinematic run, which is, I guess, a shame because it would have been nice to see it in the cinema. I mean, I guess it's still there, but like before they put it on Netflix and you can catch it on Netflix and uh, let us know what you think.